Are you on the fence about buying a gimbal? Do you think that by doing the ninja walk or by having a tripod and locking those elbows that you can get as good a footage as a gimbal? I'm here to tell you that you just can't compete with the DJI Osmo 6. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Yo, 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 it's Joe from Photos with Phones. I sure am hyped to be back making videos. It's been too long. DJI is a leading brand in the world of both drones and gimbals. The Osmo 6 is an innovative gimbal that is full of features that make it a must have device for all, from mobile content creators to dads just trying to capture videos on a family vacation. In this video, you'll see the Osmo 6 in a few different scenarios. I'll compare that heel toe walking to walking with a tripod to just walking normally with the gimbal. I'll show you what the Osmo 6 can do fully extended with that selfie stick arm. And I will attach things like moment lenses to the Osmo 6 to see just how powerful that motor on the gimbal is. I'll also unbox the gimbal and show you everything that comes included. I'll give you a tutorial of the app and the gimbal interface. And then I will also do a review where I'll tell you my thoughts about whether the Osmo 6 is worth it for mobile filmmaking. So without further ado, let's get to what you came for. The DJI Osmo 6 comes in this box that has a lot of Chinese writing on it. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some of the uh, data and security concerns that are associated with DJI. Personally, I've weighed the pros and cons of these data security issues, and I'm okay with it. If you want to chat more about this, drop a comment down there. I'd love to talk about it. I'm just not going to talk more about it in this video. In the box, you'll find the gimbal itself, a mini tripod, a wrist strap, a storage pouch, a USB-C cable, a quick start guide, and a safety manual. The first thing I noticed when I picked up the Osmo 6 is number one, how lightweight and compact it is. This thing folds down super small, but also that it's made of super high quality materials. It feels very durable in your hands. Compared to my old Zion gimbal that felt clunky and kind of cheaply made, the Osmo 6 is a world of difference. That being said, how it looks and feels doesn't really matter. So let's talk about what DJI says the gimbal can do versus what it actually can do. The Osmo 6 is very easy both to set up and to use. To get started, you have to download the Mimo app available both on Android and iOS. Once you have the app installed, you just connect the smartphone to the gimbal via Bluetooth. All right, so I guess I am looking at the DJ Mimo app inside. So because I've connected the app with the Bluetooth, it is automatically knowing that I'm here. I'm just going to point it at my guitar because that's just something that's interesting. That's, we got to adjust that focus. So that's what I'm doing over here with this dial. But what I really want to do for you right now is to walk you through the app and show you all of the different stuff in the app. I'm going to start over here on this left hand side just because that's not the kind of stuff that you get in the native camera app. So that seems like a good place to start. So this home button, that's just going to take you back to this home area. There's a whole lot of stuff in here. I'm not gonna go through all of this because I don't think it's a great use of my time or your time, but you've got videos that were shot on the gimbal. So they almost have like a social media for DJI users. They've got the different guides and how to use the app camera moves, essentially like a dedicated YouTube channel here on the app. Looks like they've got 
ads for their version of the GoPro and the new drones and all that kind of stuff. Looks like you have a, an academy up here. I'm assuming that's just, I guess that's specific information about your device. So that's kind of cool. Looks like down here, they've got all of what you captured, which I had just had that stuff automatically save onto my camera roll. But if you prefer to do it that way, that's fine. Here we have, yeah, they have like these templates. turn that sound off because that song is obnoxious but I've saw this earlier while using the app they have like these templates that make it super easy to follow along and make high quality videos but in that editor it looks like you can use the templates or edit it the way that you want to edit it was I just clicked on profile I'm not gonna create a DJI profile I don't need any more of DJI tracking me than they already are doing so I'm just gonna go ahead and click into the device and take you through the rest of these modes. This little star thing that looks like a film reel up here. I guess, yeah, that's just mo more of these little template things. Over here on the left, this auto camera thing, this is saying that it is in autofocus, auto exposure, all that kind of stuff. So all you do is click on that M and now you have the power to Adjust your own ISO, adjust your own shutter speed here. This next one, this is going to be how you're going to adjust your resolution and frame rate. Pretty standard. You got 4K, 1080p, and 720. Um, and then you're going to be able to shoot in all of the, those different frame rates as well. There is a separate mode over here for slow motion. So that's why you're not seeing 120 and 240 frames per second. This next one here, this is some sort of beauty mode. I did some experimenting with this. I am just not somebody who really cares. So I'm not gonna talk about it. If you are interested in that glamor mode, it is not available in 4K and 60 frames per second. So you can't shoot in 4K 24 frames per second and you can't shoot in 1080p 60 frames per second. Both 4K and 60 frames per second are unavailable. Your three little dots down here are going to open up some other stuff. Okay, so there's your auto or your white balance. I just couldn't find it. And I guess, yeah, you can custom white balance. So I like that, that's nice. I do obviously love the fact that you can do the grid lines and the diagonals. That's something that is a big help for framing and stuff like that. Face track, that is like, there's, uh, I've got plenty of footage of there being a little green box on my face and especially when you're using that selfie camera the like the selfie camera is not wide enough and so the software that face track is constantly losing the face because part of the face leaves the frame and so i turned that off i found it to be pretty annoying dolby vision I should have kept that on. That's a mistake on my part for not having that on. That's just going to add a little bit of extra pizzazz to your shots is really the best way to put it. The shot guides, I don't need that. It has never mentioned that. So we'll just keep that there. Rotate mobile device with joystick suitable for capturing corridors and streets. I thought this was a very cool feature that was super easy to use. I remember trying to do that with my Zion gimbal and it being a big struggle and I had no issues. Uh, follow mode, keep horizon level when recording suitable for most shooting scenes. That is what I spent the most of the time in just because it, it was super simple. Follow handle movements when recording, suitable for capturing creative shots. So this is, we're going this way, this way up. There's a shot where I tried to walk the gimbal along the ground. It absolutely had to have been in FPV mode. I think FPV is a terminology that has to do 
with drones. So like there is that kind of wah, 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 super lots of movement, that sort of stuff. And I think that's I think that's where that FPV comes from. I like the fact that you can adjust the follow speed and all that kind of stuff. You've got those different options, calibration. I haven't had any issue with it not being calibrated, so. Oh, so that's cool. Depending on what type of phone you have, it's gonna balance slightly different in the holder. So that's cool that you are able to do that additional balancing. The wheel, that side wheel mode, you just click it the one time. So it switches to manual focus, then zoom focus. Super easy. Press switch button three times. I like the fact that you can switch that. Joystick speed medium. I didn't feel a need to adjust any sort of joystick settings. Joystick control free. Yeah, so this just allows me to kind of move diagonally, which I like on the gimbal. So that's just super, super simple right there in that last page. So that gets us through that left side. You're gonna be able to switch your cameras right here. I do wish it was easier to switch the camera. That is something that I found problems with. Gesture control, I really tried with the gesture control. I promise it, I could not get it to work. If you know how to get it to work, you know what I did wrong, please comment below so that I can know because that is a fairly nice feature to have. I shoot a lot of YouTube videos by myself. So all of this stuff up here is just showing you settings. It's not really doing anything for you. Just like in the native camera app, you're going to tap. I don't see anything for locking. Actually, yeah, I do. There you go, it locked. Drag it down for the exposure down, up for the exposure up. It's nice to have that sort of functionality. It didn't respond as well as a native camera app does, but I guess that's fine. I think All right, that's to look at your album. So now we're just talking about these different modes over here. I did all of my shooting in the video mode just because if I want something that's gonna be slow motion, I'll shoot in 4K 60 frames per second. And a lot of the other modes, I just wasn't all about, but I'll walk you through them. Story mode, this is going to be like those templates that I think are specifically designed for social media. This pano mode, maybe we just hit that button. Oh, I guess it is panoing the whole room that I'm in. Is it gonna come all the way over to me? That would be dope. That would be dope. Do it. No. So that's kind of cool, right? And the fact that it's gonna generate a perfect pano, I like that. Photo mode, we've got all the same kind of stuff. Looks like you have a timer over here that's added. Again, the gesture control. This up here is gonna be how you switch to front and back. Wave hi to the camera, Joe, that's talking to the camera right now. Hey, how you doing? Video mode, simple, intuitive, like similar to the native camera app. It's not gonna be any sort of wild change for you if you wanna switch to this. So slow, it's gonna say four times and eight times instead of what the native camera app says. The native camera app says 120 frames per second and 240 frames per second. They're basing that off of 30 frames per second. So 120 frames per second divided by 30 is four. So that's four times slowed down. 240 divided by 30 is eight. So that's eight times slowed down. Dyna zoom or dynamic zoom is a dolly zoom. It's a nice effect to use in your videos. I personally would just prefer to do it with the wheel while I'm shooting than to allow this effect and this software to do it for me. I did try it a couple times as I was filming the talking bits on location for this video and I didn't love the results. I mean, it did what it was supposed to do, but it, it just didn't really make sense what it was doing. It was giving me directions. I was following the directions and it, it yeah, it was just a mess.
That's the DJI Nemo app. Again, you don't have to use it to use the gimbal. All of this functionality works in the native camera app. All of this works in the native camera app. The only thing that didn't work for me, the wheel loses its functionality. So, um, I am kind of finished with my shooting this morning. I captured what I feel like is a lot of really good content on the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 or something like that. Honestly, at this point, names are just something else. I have to say I'm impressed. Between the usability of the interface of the gimbal between the little trigger on the back that when you click it twice it's going to get it back to all sorts of level i love this little dial on the side it allows you to switch between focus and zoom and then be able to do that much more smoothly than if you were kind of doing this whole deal on the iphone or even using the little dial on the native camera app So that's fantastic. I love how easy it is to switch between the modes, switch between vertical and horizontal. I love, this is gonna sound super simple, but that record button that's right there, like it wasn't until the very end of shooting that I really even thought to click it, but it is so much easier than having to like tap on the phone. Yeah, ev literally everything about this gimbal. I am disappointed that I haven't purchased a DJI gimbal before now. Um, I like the fact that you didn't have to do a lot of balancing with the gimbal. Um, you kind of just turn, turn it on, it automatically balances itself, and then you attach the uh, like magnetic part of the smartphone holder directly to the gimbal. It sorts itself all out. No trying to figure all of that self out yourself. Um, the gimbal does the balancing for you, which I like. This is, this is something usable. And if you are considering purchasing one of these, my opinion is it's worth it. And that's all we got for you. If you feel like you got value from this video, go ahead and hit the like button down there. It really helps photos of phones out a lot because it forces YouTube to show our videos to other people. Because of the algorithm. Comment your thoughts about the DJI Osmo 6 below. Are you gonna pick one up? If you do, please consider buying one through my link in the video description. The small compensation that I receive from your purchase helps me continue to make videos just like this one. Wish I had done something different in this video? Comment your thoughts below. I do love constructive criticism because it helps me make better videos. Okay, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. And as always, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. We're coming out with more mobile photography and filmmaking, tips, tricks, hacks, reviews, and unboxings, anything you could imagine if you like taking photos and videos on your phone. Toodles. See you in the next one. Bye. So the uh, double phone gimbal tripod situation continues. Um, I look like an idiot, but I just don't really care. It's all about getting that good, good content.